Hello everyone, Game Dog here. Along with the Orange Panda. And welcome to uh, a very special playthrough. Um, this is of a of a 1996 PC release called Harvester. Oh, it sure is. <laughs> this is a pretty infamous game and one that actually both of us are quite a fan of. Yes. Um, do you want to know how you learned about this game? Um, blame it on Retsu Prey, Retsu like we Prey. do everything else. <laughs> everyone, everyone knows this game because of Retsu Prey. I actually knew about it a little bit beforehand, but um, <laughs> population fifty one, area fifty one. Yeah. Okay, so if you've never heard of this game before, um, it's 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 really difficult to explain. You wake up as this like eighteen year old, and in in like the fifties, and that's pretty much all you have to go on. The, uh, the entire game is about figuring out what's going on. Uh, there's like a bunch of eerie stuff that happens later on. And everyone is fixated on this building right here that they just call the Lodge. And you spend like 90% of the game trying to get into it. Yeah, this is a trippy game. It's been a few good years since yeah. I've actually watched Retsu Prey go through it. It's I've... also kind of a gory game yes. as well. So if, <laughs> if some of you are a bit squeamish, this might be a, an LP. Oh, there Look, we there go. there we go already. This might be an LP worth skipping, but... <laughs> Yep, it also can get a bit mature points too, so close your eyes, kitties. <laughs> this this uh this goes on for like two minutes, these ones. <laughs> Gilbert Austin directed this. Um I have the IMDB page for this game open actually. Because uh, this game is a movie. <laughs> the voice this game does have a lot of dialogue <laughs> in it. Uh the voice actors page specifically, because uh this game has a lot of voice actors and I actually think all of them do a pretty good job. <laughs> this is a very special game. Yeah. John, John Johns! Johns. <laughs> I just noticed that. I Does played it through it. I edited it. That's the first time I noticed that name. <laughs> Two first names, but they're both the same first name. I wonder if some of these are pseudonyms, maybe. <laughs> probably. You probably don't want to attach your name to this. <laughs> also, I gotta say, this might be the last LP Aaron and I will be doing together for quite some time. Um, because she's actually going off to college pretty soon. Yep, going to Cool Egg, so... She, uh, marine biology, was it? Got that right, fish. Yeah. So I, I wanted to make our last playthrough a very special one, mm. a game I know both of us love. <laughs> it's... The only way to make more special was to do Dark Seed 2. Dark Seed, not. But that one's a mess to get Honestly, through. Honestly, I'm not... That, I don't know. I don't think Dar either Dark Seed of Eight has aged that well. And oh, I don't they think, haven't. I don't think this game has aged that well either. Also, the, the, the banging thing is clipping through the bell on the left. Oh, look, well, here we go. Yes. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, man. 90s FMVs are my jam. I love this style so much. <laughs> so, yeah, this game has real people in it. Yeah. So you'll Th there's actual it. acting. Um, this is uh, Kurt Chrysler as Steve, the main character. And I have some... Uh, I got a bunch of fun facts written down for this game, and I have a very particularly damning fun fact about Kirk Chrysler that I'll bring up later. Um, what I will say for now, though, is that he might actually be my favorite voice actor in this game. He he gets that perfect pitch between sarcasm and just confusement about everything. And I absolutely love his performance in this game, although unfortunately we may not be seeing him again. But yeah. <laughs> once again, I'll talk about that later. Uh, so first, pick up the pen and the button in your, um, oh yeah, this this is a point and click, by the way. I don't play these kinds of games that often. I actually had a guide open this entire playthrough. I don't think you need to tell people how to play this game, because I don't think they'll be too interested on it playing this game. Yeah, I don't know. like a lot of adventure games, I argue that this is more fun to watch than to play. Um, oh, look, there you go. Oh yeah, there's combat in this game. Look at him go. Look You're at not going to see it again. Boy. You're not going to see it again for, like... Four hours, I'm not even joking. <laughs> so, uh, his great stance, the classic Mike Dawson. Oh my goodness. Every RPG hero, or every action game hero t walks, walks the same. A stick directly up their ass. Yeah. Oh wait, we don't want to do that yet. Oh yeah, I fumble around at the beginning. Uh, we'll talk about the paper boy later. Uh, for now, just pick up a paper... <laughs> this game's kind of janky, by the way, but I kind of love it because of that. Uh, the first thing you want to do is want to pick up a paper. You can't actually read it. Um... What? Yeah, all the lines are voice acted, too. Oh, yeah, everything is voice acted. So uh, if we ever run out of things to say, I can skip to the voice acting, I guess. Yeah. Look, I just... Do you know me? Wish I didn't, because then you wouldn't be my brother. And I'd have your room. And all the presents at Christmas. Though I will soon enough anyway. Cause you're a lousy rat. 
You're my brother? No, duh. Listen, I don't mean to, uh... I think his name is Hank? Yeah, yeah, okay, it is. Our brother's name is Hank, and he is voiced by, um, Ben Morgan. <laughs> you know, on the IMDb page, none of these people have pictures, because they're all probably just, like, friends and family of the developers. I like this, the other party played generic child yeah, generic in classroom, child in number, classroom two. number two. I think I know what child that is, too, because there is a, there is a cutscene that takes place in the classroom. <laughs> yeah, spoilers, there's a school in this there's game. There's a school in this game. Uh, it's, it's your... It's your classic 1950s uh, American neighborhood, although not quite. <laughs> uh, not quite in the slightest. Yeah. The cowboy show. So, Hank, you can't, you can't see it from this angle. Later, you actually do get a view of what he's watching. Um, he's watching a cowboy show. Uh, he's watching a cowboy versus Indian show. He's watching Woody's Roundup. Yeah. <laughs> this game... What if I were to tell you that this game is actually a deep commentary on how violent media can affect people? To be fair, I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest. Like, it is. Like, that's actually the point of the game. Like, right here, we're talking about Hank about, hey, kids probably shouldn't be watching stuff that violent, but Hank's just like, it's the 50s. It's what's on TV. It's for kids, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> He's decked out in all of his cowboy garb and saying how this game gets later in, gets kind of violent. Uh, Don't want to spoil any of that uh, good stuff. But Hanks, can... you do later in get a glimpse of what he's watching, and it's, yeah, it's it's pretty kid should not be watching it. <laughs> it's quite spine tingling. <laughs> he also says um, he is, uh, he's, he also says that he's, uh, he's sick for school. And, uh, of course Steve doesn't believe him. <laughs> I mean, just look at that face. I'm surprised this game hasn't memed very hard. This this game has some very memeable moments. And it has a memed very hard, which is very upsetting. And I may or may not be attempting to make a meme in this playthrough. We, you'll, you'll see later. <laughs> oh, Alright, so that's our little brother. Also, his sprite is larger than us. Yeah, look at him. That, and he's some, in the foreground, too. Oh, wait, no, that doesn't make sense. Oh, and uh, here's our 1950s mom. <laughs> oh, it's the 1950s baby, too. Yeah. Uh, what's her name? I forgot if she's listed as her name or just mom in 1950s the credits. 1950s mom. Okay, yeah, okay. Mom. Every mom in the game is voiced by the same woman. <laughs> Mary Allen is the voice actress's good name. Good job, Mary Allen, playing all these uh, very good moms. Actually, the... Steve brings attention to that. We'll, we'll see later. Like, okay, th that's the first major thing you're gonna notice that this game brings up that's kind of weird. <laughs> this game's weird? No way. Yeah. Are you gonna check on the baby, too? Uh, the baby... Unfortunately, I know why you asked that. The baby doesn't come into play until later. I know, I, I just want to know, is there, like, stuff I missed out? Does stuff happen with the baby earlier? We will see some things in this playthrough that I don't think you've ever seen before. Yeah, because again, I've only seen the Retsus do it. This game has a lot of, like, small attention to details that add nothing to the game. Like, rooms that have nothing in them, NPCs that really amount to nothing, oh, yeah. item, pointless items. And unfortunately, like of a lot of these older games, there are a lot of dead ends. One of the reasons why I'm not really a particularly huge fan of these types of games is, um, a lot of them have what I think people call Dead Man Walking Syndrome. Which is basically when you can screw up the game in some sort of way, so like you you render it unwinnable, but the game will still let you play. Mm. In fact, I think there's one scenario where you can screw up very early on. They make cutscenes for it to signify that you're doing something right, but no, you still can't beat the game. So, <laughs> well, oh, oh, okay. so yeah, this this game. <laughs> I mean, they certainly did their homework. I'll give them that. Like they like they put the effort in, but. Uh, like, honestly, this is why I don't play games like this that often. <laughs> so if you want to know why, this game is a fever dream. Yeah. That's a bit of a... Um, yeah, if you like fever dreamy stuff, then stick around with us. So what we're learning right now is that um, we're in an arranged marriage uh, with this girl named Stephanie, who we'll meet later. Uh, we just got out of high school. We just graduated. And he looks like a college graduate. He looks about that age. But you can't she... cast anyone your age when you're doing stuff like <laughs> exactly. this. Exactly. <laughs> Um, and, uh, our father is sick. Although, the room he's actually in is locked, and, uh, we'll, we'll find our way into there later, and we'll discover what's going on with him. The but... memories are flooding back yeah, slowly. Yeah, okay, you, you remember what's going on with his dad? Very, these memories are coming back full force. Okay. First okay. happened with the baby. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, one thing I do find kind of funny is that her name is just Mom. <laughs> it's like every single parent in every single cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> it's like her name might as well be Mom. <laughs> Imagine that, like, old Egoraptor animation for Speed Racer. <laughs> Your mom's name is Mom. Do you realize how awkward that is when we have sex? <laughs> Fiance? This is insane! Yes, I love his voice acting so oh, much. so whiny. <laughs> the Mike Dawson school of thought right there. <laughs> Pre wedding jitters. Can something like that produce amnesia? Oh yeah, and um, Steve is saying he can't remember anything because, you know, he's just a normal guy who woke up in the 1950s for happens, some reason. It happens to us all. Yeah, and uh, everyone thinks he has amnesia, but at the same time, no one believes him, and the reasoning is, you always were a kidder, Steve. And, like, every single voice act, every single character in this game, aside from, like, two, use that as, a, as an excuse to not believe him. You always were a kidder. You always were a kidder, Steve. I like his slightly open mugshot. Like, his mugshot on the bottom. One of his eyes oh, that, is, like, that's slightly... your health indicator. Oh, the happier yeah. he is, the fuller his health bar is. I to talk to Jimmy James. Oh, Jimmy James. Yeah, this is, um, this is, vo this kid is voiced by Christopher Regan Amo Amones, I think? A-M-M-O-N-S. <laughs> So something kind of, the first interesting thing about this world is that they don't the paper boy doesn't give out papers, he takes them. Two dollars. Every single every single like house, I think, or most of the houses have like a box of newspapers that they imply you take out um every morning. Um and you need to give him a paper every morning, or else a couple days in, uh he'll pull a gun on you. Yeah. Yeah, guys, welcome to video. Games. Welcome to Harvester. <laughs> Ah, oh, gee whiz. Ah, oh, gee whiz, Mr. Batman. Ah, <laughs> oh, heck. This game does have a combat system, although it doesn't become prevalent until maybe, like, 80 or 90% into the game. You do get things that you can use as weapons, such as, like, shovels and axes, and you can kill NPCs. Um, oftentimes I'll get you arrested, I will show that later, because the, the, the arresting cutscene is amazing. <laughs> like, every cutscene. I don't think you can get that disc. Uh, I've looked it up. I don't think there's a way to get that. And um, our father is uh, actually... Okay, the room he's in is barred off. That's not suspicious at all. And I, I, I hear... I couldn't get it to work, but I hear that if you try to break in, uh, the police arrest you. <laughs> to my own house. <laughs> yeah, I broke into my own house. Our right, time to go venture yep. off into this uh, right. town. So here's the world map. Um, the first two, I think maybe three episodes, are going to be exclusively walking around and talking to people. And trust me, you guys want to see this because there are a lot of cutscenes and or oh. ca like characters in this game. The fire station. Mm -hmm. Oh, you remember the fire station? No, we'll, I can't. we'll get to that one later. Yeah, I won't uh, divulge anything. Me. Remember the missile base? Oh god. Yeah, <laughs> that guy. Where are we going? First? Uh, we're going to the Potsdam's residence. Um, this is, um, the person we are arranged to marry. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, the piece- Remember Mr. Potsdam? How can you forget? <laughs> this is like one of the most memorable characters in the game for all the wrong reasons. I like the picture of meat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you examine it, it says, the man of the house squeezing his meat. So this is Mr. Potsdam. Um, he, he wears a wife beater. He doesn't look like the greatest husband, but- Something kind of creepy about him is that he has a really weird obsession with red meat. It's all he talks about. It's all he ever wants. It's implied that he's marrying you. He, he's having his daughter marry you just because your father works at a slaughterhouse. Yep. Yeah. Welcome to, uh, welcome to Harvester. Look, there's, there's wife. There is other 50s housewife. <laughs> again, once again, the mom doesn't get a name. Um, Mr. Potsdam is voiced by Travis Miller. <laughs> Have these people done anything else? You know, is let what me I'm check wondering. that real quick. I'm gonna go to. Let's see. Oh no 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 no. I'll get an ad for a like Hulu or um, something. Mr. Potsdam, <laughs> Travis Miller has has um acted in two things: Harvester and a 1992 release called Leap of Faith, where he plays Man in White. So, like, like I said before, a lot these aren't the greatest voice act uh, of actors. In fact, looking through the list, I don't think I recognize a single one of them. Well, none of them have a picture. None of them even have pictures on IMDb, so 
Oh, wait, no, one of them does. Oh, that guy. Okay, we'll talk about that guy later, but... <laughs> He's the only important one. <laughs> Look at me. Mrs. Potsdam wants Stephanie to study hard for her finals. If it was up to me, you could go straight upstairs, but you know... <laughs> The little woman, you'll have to ask her. There's a lot of like creepy connotations around Mr. Potsdam that we'll talk about later. There's a lot of creepy connotations in this the, game. Everyone, <laughs> every single character has something crazy about them. I hate how the pointer turns into lips. <laughs> One thing I see some Let's Players do is put the lips over the characters' mouths. And I can't tell you to do that. I don't want to. I don't want to. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is post recorded, by the way. Yeah. Um. Oh, we would be playing them? this very differently if uh. <laughs> See if you, this is live. Have you explained the nightmare of your recording situation with oh this Oh my game? goodness, this game was a pain in the ass to record. Okay, so when it comes to like older PC games, a lot of them are exclusively meant to run on older PCs. So when you try to run them on newer computers, um, you get some very weird connotation, or you get some very weird like scenarios. Uh, for example, there are several cutscenes in this game that would outright skip. Um, for some very technical reasons. I actually had to play through parts of this game, again, at half speed, just to record the cutscenes. Like, it's it's a, it's absurd. Like, this game was not meant to be played on, on a computer this new. <laughs> yeah, guys, so, quality game right here. Oh my goodness, in the last area, I had to play with one health. I'm not even joking. So you like, got to see our <sighs> main boy looking very painful. I haven't, I haven't edited pain. that part yet. Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. I, I've edited every part up until the final area, but yeah. <laughs> the final area itself is like two, is gonna be like two videos. Is that just a blanket on the couch or like a, a green stain? I it, It's shaped kinda like an anvil. He's eating so much meat he's sweating green and it's just leaking off the couch. Okay, that's kinda creepy. Does that actually work? That sounds like a game theory episode. Oh, by the way, that little creepy thing right there, uh, don't mind that. That's the only time that happens in the game. Okay. I don't know if the if the guy I don't know if the guy's microphone spiked or something. I'm gonna assume that's the case, and they just figured there's hundreds of lines, they're not gonna bot they're not gonna mind. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you By the way, this guy right here is saying that if you don't like meat, you're a commie. Yeah, it's Oh yeah, there the, I it's given that it's in the fifties. Was Cold War the fifties or the forties? I don't know the World Wars that much. I know it's not a World War, but you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Well, luckily we have good old Uncle Internet. There's a lot of characters in this game who outright hate communists. Why are you so anxious to get into the lodge? There's wonders inside. I've heard there's more meat in there than they know what to do. Now that you're of age, Steve, you might go down to the post office and fill out so there's like five characters in this game that tell you to sign up for the lodge. Yeah, the lodge. Yeah, the lodge. The lodge. Everyone who's played this game remembers the lodge. All right, let's go meet. All right, uh, go explore. Let's go meet his wife. Same mom once again. So this is um this is Mrs. Potsdam played once again by Mary Allen. <laughs> I want to see. Yeah, she got a whole bunch of <laughs> yeah generic PTA moms. Did Did you see? Okay, I want you to listen to this. A horrible thing to say. You're both standing around baking cookies. Same kind of dress. Same pearls. So bizarre. So he actually brings up that all the mothers in this game look exactly the same aside from their hair. So go to symbolism.com. If you go <laughs> to the, um, if you, if you skip ahead, if you skip behind the video, you'll actually see that our mother does look exactly the same, just a different pose and a different hairstyle. So what deep symbol? So it's probably just like them disguises. We don't want to hire more actors, but it's I, probably like deep. I symbolism. have reasons to believe that it's a it's a it's a hive mind thing. A hive mom. Well, well, hive mom. <laughs> 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 There's a scene in the game where like four moms gather together, and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> you'll see what I mean when that happens. So go to a symbolism. Type your symbolism in the comments below. Oh yeah, I want you folks to comment on this on this playthrough because this game is absurd in every way possible. <laughs> Stake to allow Stephanie to run around loose. She doesn't want to get married either, huh? Are you saying you don't want to marry my daughter? I don't know your daughter, Mrs. Potsdam. Why is she grounded? Afraid she'll... Stephanie is grounded right now. Um, our wife to be, and um, the parents won't tell us why. Because this game is a nightmare. This game is a nightmare in every way, shape, and form. 
wants us all to be one happy family, and he doesn't want to risk anything happening at the last minute. I don't see any reason why not. You mustn't be too hard on Mr. Poston, Steve. He's a disappointed man. No matter how many lodge admission forms he fills out, they keep turning him down. He has a new application in, though, so keep your fingers crossed. If he joins the lodge, you and Stephanie can have your wedding in the Chapel of Love rather than over at Moynihan's place. Moynihan is a morgue worker. Why would you marry there? <laughs> He owns a hotel and a church, because that's two normal things to own simultaneously. And also, they're yeah, right yeah. next to each other. It's like the uh, the placement of the stores in Dark Seed Two. Like uh, <laughs> first you it? tie them, then you try them, then you fry them. Yeah. yeah. I actually watched um, parts of Dark Seed Two before this for whatever reason. I watch it yearly. I. <clears throat> Oh my goodness, Retsu Prey's LP of Dark Seed 2 is legendary. <laughs> the person, whoever played it, made it hours longer than it needs to be, but it's, it, I think it just kind of works with, he needed, with Mike Dawson's character. He needed his bathroom time to reflect. <laughs> the ring tossed gif is what I look for. You know what's, what, Dark Seed 2 has got to be a, an awkward game for the actual Mike Dawson to talk about. Oh yeah. Okay, so a little fun fact about the first Dark Seed is that, um, Mike Dawson, like, I, I did a little spin there. <laughs> he actually played himself in the game. Um, yeah, and and when when they did Dark Sea 2, he had nothing to do with it, but they still used his character, and they made him, like, a complete wimp. Um, grab the aspirin, grab the vitamins, and then uh, I think we're... Oh, grab... Or, or, or lube? I think that's, like... Yeah, yeah, you need the lube for something. You actually do need it for something. And then here's the first time where I think I messed up badly. Oh no. I took Stephanie's tampons by accident. <laughs> okay, so that doesn't screw up the game, but I was really terrified for the rest of it because knowing these games, I thought that was going to come back to bite me later. Knowing these games, I knew I was going to walk into like the second last room of the game and then Stephanie's going to come out and kill me because I stole her tampons. But no, apparently that doesn't do it. In fact, I hear you can like get... You can trigger some dialogue if you actually show them to Stephanie. <laughs> Again, this this game has a lot of stuff that just doesn't really um, that just doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. It's you know one of those things. One of those things. One of my favorite things. <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh, Mike Dawson. Yeah. So like they use his likeness in Dark Seed Two, but um, they, they, he had nothing to do with it. Yeah. And they like made him <laughs> complete know. wimp in Dark Seed Two. <laughs> Oh, that might be fun for another LP at some point, but not for a while, because I... Oh my goodness. You don't want to play through Dark I don't want to play another adventure game for a long time. Not after the final area of this game. Did you know that he works as a professor of game design now? Yeah, they talk about it all the time when the Retsu play Let's Play. <laughs> Let's I mean, he he turned out better than than whoever played the, voice, uh, the main character of this game. <laughs> uh, for later. For later. For later. So this is Stephanie. Um, she has amnesia as well. Oops, it happens. You two are the only two people who are feeling a strange phenomenon where you have no idea like where this place is or what kind of life this is. But I'm fairly sure I don't belong in Harvest. Roll credits. <laughs> I can't remember anything, but I feel in my heart that the woman downstairs is not my mother. She's like this thing. Like a parody. A bad joke with mother as the punchline. Does that make any sense? I don't know if saying yes or no does anything, but I like to say yes anyway. Validator. Later in, I get brutally honest of her and she doesn't like it. <laughs> you always do that in all video games. Yeah. You always have, like, the jerk answers in the Pokemon games. <laughs> oh, man. There's this one point in Sun and Moon where Lily asks if you like her new outfit, and I'm like... Where's the hat? <laughs> what happened to the hat? Because she doesn't look the same about the hat. No. They treat me well, but they won't let me leave this room. Not even to go out in the yard. Not until the wedding. They won't tell you why? Each one blames the other for grounding me. They make up different excuses. Different I wonder what would happen.
happen if she did try to escape? I don't know, let's know. Knowing this game, you can probably help her, and then that would screw over the game. <laughs> and listen to the noises in the house. The game is a nightmare. Oh yeah, she's a love interest, by the way, if you yeah. haven't figured it out by now. A weird boy comes to the house and picks up the paper. He doesn't deliver the paper. He picks up scrap paper that Miss Potsdam sets out on the porch for him. Some morning she forgets, and the boy gets furious. He gives me the creeps. Anything else you can tell me? I hear these weird... scraping sounds in the bathroom sometimes. Like something is sliding along the wall. This is supposed to clue you into something. There is actually a peephole in the bathroom. And you can open it up for a special cutscene. And it's implied that Mr. Potsdam is actually using it too. And you can actually confront him about it. Uh, I I will actually do that later, because I, I figured out about it as I was recording this. <laughs> Before it's too late. Escape? Harvest is a prison, Steve. Don't forget that. Of course I'm right. Everything in Harvest seems to revolve around this damned lodge. This order of the Harvest Moon. That's another video game! <laughs> what are you doing?! You realize Harvest Moon is just a phrase, right? Yes, okay. I know. <laughs> but it's like, gosh, I can't believe they um, named this island after the movie what Madagascar. What came out first? Um, Harvester or Harvest Moon? Oh, I don't know, but look at this good FMV. <laughs> I'm not sure if you heard that, but she said, um, woman can't actually join the lodge. Uh, so the Potsdams have been pressuring her to get Steve to join. They gotta get to the lodge somehow. They gotta get to the lodge somehow. It, it, there are like three characters trying to get into the lodge all throughout this game. And I think only two of them succeed. One is Steve, of course. Our main boy, he's yeah, our... Yeah, spoilers. Do you want to guess who the other is? Actually, you probably it's, remember. It's been a while. It's okay. been such a long while. <laughs> Okay, fine. <laughs> I'll leave that up to you folks in the comments. Who do you think is going to get in? Oh yeah, something something about the cutscenes I want to bring up. The resolution for the cutscene is actually halved in-game. Most likely because they had to compress them all. I actually blew them back up for the sake of this playthrough. So, yeah, they're larger than normal. I, I think I put it to widescreen too, so that's nice. You're welcome. Whenever You're welcome. Uh, when, whenever a cutscene does play, though, the bottom of the screen looks very glitchy and, dare I say, even seizure-inducing. There is one point in the game which I will show off what that looks like, um, although every other cutscene is gonna, is gonna have that, is gonna have the, the widescreen treatment. Are you gonna slide some seizure warnings? No, I, I, I will, I will, I will warn before we do it. Um, it, it's all the cutscenes in the meat plant, I'm not gonna edit, but... Yeah, other than that, though, uh, you're, it, all the cutscenes are, are fine. <laughs> Do you guys like this uh, epic foreshadowing we're doing with, like, random words like fire station and meat plant? Oh, yeah, the meat plant. Of course there's a meat plant in this game. Every edgy adventure game needs a, needs a meat plant. Because <laughs> it's creepy. It's what? Creepy. Creepy. Okay, creepy. I thought you said something else. Creepy. Clippy. No. If it comes down to it, we just won't take the vows. I don't think anything in Harvest is that simple. Too many people are determined that we get hitched. Why? Potsdam wants the meat your father promised him. Your parents want to force you to settle down. <sighs> Mrs. Potsdam wants to have the wedding in the lodge. Me? I just want to escape. I think that's all you can talk of her about for now. I like how buys in all caps. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Bye! <laughs> See ya! Bye! <laughs> All right, I think that'll do it for part one. And um, away he goes. And the way he goes. <laughs> Our hero departs. Oh, dang. All right. We'll see you folks next time we explore more of the town. It will get nuts. Bye. Adios.